five of the Penrite Pro MX Championship presented by AMX Superstores and we are in Maitland, gateway to the Hunter Valley wine region and 42 kilometres northwest of the picturesque seaside city of Newcastle. Hi, I'm Kate Peck and with me is 11-time national motocross champion Lee Hogan. Hogs, have you recovered from Gilman because that was some of the best racing all season and some really big wins as well. It was a bit of a fairy tale for local hero and privateer Brett Metcalf. Well, yeah, absolutely. What a season we're seeing from Brett Metcalf. Finds himself up in the top three in the championship, just two points off Todd Waters. But it was all about the last round for him. His hometown round in Gilman won the first moto, and he was on fire in the second moto, ever so close to getting that Cinderella story, but not quite. And it was a tale of first for CDR Yamaha. Monster Energy's Aaron Tanty. He got his first Super Bowl, his first win, and the first time he's held the red plate for the 450 class. Well, we've seen his starts, we've seen how fast Tanty is, but what he needed to prove to the world was that he can finish off a moto, not only fitness-wise, but under intense pressure from these old dogs barking down the back of his neck, and that is what he did. He has come and he has shown the world that he is ready to play, and he's on home turf here at Maitland, so it could be very difficult for his competition. Now we've had four rounds with five different moto winners and four different riders holding that red plate, which is a lot of movement in the MX1 class. So let's take a look at our top five because the championship is wide open. Well, it sure is. We've already mentioned Tanty. He's got the red plate. We've got Todd Waters and Brett Metcalf deep in their little battle for second and third place. But let's not forget about Ferris and Kirk Gibbs, who has come out firing on all cylinders. So these five guys have shown they're going to be a force to be reckoned with, and that's going to come right the way down to the wire with the championship. Let's crack in and go for a burn around the Maitland track with local motocross hero and expert commentator Danny Ham. Welcome to this week's Michelin track preview here at Maitland. And as you can see straight off the start, we have had a change from last year through this first corner that has now straightened up a lot more and into a bit of a double apex. One thing that we do notice as we ride around is just simply how loose this surface is at the moment. As we see, the ground below me is ripped up very deep, very chunky dirt at the moment and quite loose as well as we work our way into this big, fast right-hand sweeper. Now you can see there's no real lines that have been formed just yet. Single bike out on the track, we're not gonna get a lot done. Big jump as we land off that one and down this very long straight. Now once they throw the water into this, many, many ruts leading into this one. And you can see already just below me, those ruts are starting to form, or at least some lines right now. Another thing on the inside, just have a look at this. It's a bit of an off-camber corner, so a couple of changes for the track this year. Up and over this one into the split section of the track. You can see we've got the inside and outside lines. It's going to be very interesting to see how we land off these ones and get through which will be the fastest line. Bit of milk hole there. We just make our way through, through these rollers down to the very back part of the track. And again, look for this inside line. You can see just there the dark bit of dirt already starting to get some ruts warming up. Into the fast sweeper. Now this is so much fun. Work our way through there and into the second last turn before we get to the finish line again. No ruts, but this berm that was there last year has been made very flat. So that should even up this corner just a little bit. As we make our way through towards the finish line. Big run into this one and up and over. A couple more turns to complete the lap though as we make our way through these tight rights. Plenty of ruts last year. I expect to see the same again. Cross the start line right here and into this last turn before we have just one more tabletop and then we will rejoin to complete the lap here at Maitland. It is going to be very, very ruddy, no doubt, once I get the water in. And that there is your Michelin track preview. Well, Danny Ham, thank you so much for helping us out there with your Michelin track preview. I was going to say, great job keeping her on two wheels. Uh, however, I don't think we got the whole story, did we, Danny? Let's uh, take a quick look here. Oh, man. <laughs> Little soil sample for the F111 triple one machine. And 
I think you were telling me there were some big rocks there, but that just looked like beautiful loamy soil to me, Danny. Yeah, clearly I need to pay the uh, producers a little bit more money. I thought I had it covered, honestly. Uh, tight ass or something. Let's take a look at the Thor lineup in the MX1 Moto 1. Kirk Gibbs was our fastest in the pole shootout. Matt Moss also on fire here today. Aaron Tanti, Dean Ferris, Hayden Melros, and Todd Waters. Yeah, a little bit further back is Metcalf. We expect to see a little bit more out of him, but we've seen it before. Qualifying doesn't mean the results in the race itself. Things can turn around substantially when we do get to the actual race, and that's what we're about to see. And I do expect to see a bit of a charge for Metcalf as we get underway. Takes a strong mind and a lot of confidence to dig yourself out of a poor qualifying and into good race form. Let's see who's going to jump out of the gate here. Moto 1, Thor, MX1, drop of the gate. Up we go. That right-hand side of the gate left Metcalf. the screen. Oh, Metcalf, what? just as we spoke about it. It's going to take something to dig yourself out of that hole. Well, there is the first big shovel load right there. And it looks like Dean Ferris also sits there in second place. Speaking to Kyle Webster a couple of days ago, Dean Ferris's teammate, he mentioned how strong Ferris is jumping out of these great, these still great starting grids. And once again, he's up there in the top two. But his nemesis, Brett Metcalf, up there in the lead. Matt Moss, that looked to be... Let's see what happened Third, just yes. there. He looks like he's trying to make a run and move into second place. You cannot deny the early race speed from Matt Moss. 100% whole shot award goes to Brett Metcalf, but I tell you what, he is under a lot of fire at the moment. Moss has made the pass on Ferris. Ferris doesn't want to give it up just yet. Split lane, who's going to come out of this first? It always is deceiving. Moss looks like he's in the lead, but how will they come out of here? Well, they cleaned up that exit there from earlier races. It was a nightmare on that right-hand turn, but Moss straight away has thrown down the, gir the gauntlet here in the early stages of Moto1 MX1. Metcalf not wanting to give it up just yet, but we know the sprint speed of Matt Moss. And I just caught in the background too. Sixth place was Tanty. He is now sitting in third. Where so has he come from? Wow. Early passes in that one. And Gibbs as well, our fastest qualifier, jumps onto the back wheel. So he is not letting him go at all as we close oh. down the first. Oh, Gibbs! That was huge! That's as close as you would ever want to get to throwing your 450 down the track. Gibbs, I was just about to say, will he tighten up for that? And straight away answers with a pass. Wow, that uh, pole position for Kirk Gibbs has translated into lap time speed here in the early stages. But Matt Moss is starting to check out a little bit. Well, I, uh, when we watch the replay at the start, I am going to be looking for where Kirk Gibbs was. Because I feel he has quite a long way back in the field and already he has moved into second. He is on an absolute mission at the moment as we look at this replay. Look at the right hand side of the screen, the number five, the bike slides out, big in swinger back. That was very lucky. Wow, and he just didn't miss a beat, just straight back into it again. There we see Brett Metcalf is coming under siege from these faster riders at the moment, and Kirk Gibbs is trying to make a move on Matt Moss. Now, I think with the kind of form we've seen in these early stages of this race, it's only a matter of time until Gibbs gets around Mossy. His lines are coming together exceptionally well, but Moss is not going to want to hand it over too easily. But just like that, Tanty does not want to let Gibbs go. This was pretty close out of here the last time around, so if they can get a good run out of the corner, oh, and he does. Beautiful Just line like up that. the inside. Yeah, it was so close the last time around. It was going to be who did the corner better, and Gibbs is the man that's done that. And Tanty straight away. Looks like he is trying to make that pass as well on Moss. Yeah, gets the power straight back to the ground and flies into that outside of that turn. He will, oh, off the side of the track for Tanty. Yeah, well, when he went through that turn, his front wheel was actually 90-90 through there. The back end stayed nice and straight, but that front wheel was going from lock to lock, and it just makes him push straight off the edge of the track. So the urgency from Tanty at the moment, you can see he does not want to let Kirk Gibbs run off into the distance. He needs to try to get past Matt Moss as quickly as he can. He's got a couple of good lines up his sleeve, and he picked up on that because that yes. is where he got passed by Kirk Gibbs. Yeah, looking around at the outside, trying to find something just a little bit different. And you're right, that's where Gibbs did go around him that last lap. So well picked up as they pass the mechanics. Oh, big jump by Moss, trying to stay up there and really low by Tanty. Here is Ferris trying to make up the small amount of ground he lost on those opening laps. And it's uh, a bit of a situation at the moment. These guys are still trying to find their feet in these early laps. 
Now, as we see a rider down there, Danny, tell us just a little bit about the mindset, if you will, from Kurt Gibbs, who last year, he won the final moto of the day here at Maitland, and he's just come off a sensational final moto at Gilman. What's going through his mind at the moment? And he's come off the back of such fantastic qualifying times this morning. Well, confidence, isn't it? It's clear to see the way he's riding at the moment. There really is uh, no obvious mistakes happening he's got some good lines right now and uh, that confidence obviously from that last win plus that fast time this morning you can see it straight away when he was out on track in practice when we were out there walking around he looked like he was on another level compared to what we saw in the opening rounds of this series yeah great pick up there and then also aaron tanty made a pass on matt moss on the same part of the track that Kirk, Kirk did, Gibbs did a couple of laps ago, but it's on at the head of the pack, and Kirk Gibbs trying to settle himself down. He can't afford to let the Yamaha rider, the CDR Yamaha Monster Energy rider, up and past. We've heard it time and time again, and a, a very, very uh, you know, famous quote, I guess we'd say, from Regan Duffy from last year, saying that red plate is very heavy. Well, and it depends on your mindset on how you deal with the red plate. And that's what we're looking at here with Aaron Tanti to see how he's going to deal with that red plate. It's the first time he's had the pleasure of running that. It looks good on the bike, and I dare say he wants to keep it there. So we mentioned about uh, Brett Metcalf being a little bit off the pace. Well, have a look at where he's sitting right now. He is closed into the back of those lead two riders, and he's in with striking distance of them guys. No problem at all. Any slight mistake out of them, and we're seeing quite a lot of these mistakes. Good right here, too, for Melroth, up there in fifth place at the moment. I thought he might have been up there in front of Waters, so Waters has had a, a moment somewhere around the track as well. Yeah, great to see Hayden Melros up there. Also, uh, ha had a little bit of a chat with him leading into this race. He's been having some frustrations trying to get some time on his race bike. He's basically riding at home with a, a relatively stock bike other than his good suspension. And uh, he's showing some fine form here at the moment. He's really impressive up there in the top five. So let's hope he can keep doing that. That'll add to his confidence. The pressure now starting to be applied by Tanti on our race leader, the number five of Kirk Gibbs, as they work their way through these rollers. I can tell you from riding, those rollers are awkward. They're not uh, nice, round, flowy things. They bounce you down really hard. So to keep uh, the back wheel on the ground and driving is quite, uh, quite a good thing to do through there. We see how choppy it is getting through that turn lane. Yeah, Brett Metcalf still sticking to the back of these guys, and our timing screen says 1.2 back to Metcalf, 1.2 back to Mossy, but I don't think that's the case. Matt Moss has certainly dropped back a little bit off the rear end of Metcalf at the moment as we speak, and we've got a three-way battle for the lead at the moment. Oh, nice line there by Metcalf. Something a little bit different. It pulls him right to the back wheel. So all of a sudden, the, sh the, the, the shifting of the weight or the, uh, the pressure has changed between these guys. A second ago, it was Tanti applying all the pressure. Now he's got to be slightly defensive as Metcalf is right there. And Mossy, he's not that far behind either. No, he's not too far behind. As this part of the race, we've got 15 minutes to go, so we're not quite at the halfway point where you really need to get yourself into a bit of a rhythm. If you're just charging over your head and trying too hard, you'll blow yourself out so quickly, your breathing will go out the window. All of a sudden, the last half of the race seems almost impossible. You need to find a rhythm right in the middle of battling with the likes of these riders here, which is just almost impossible to do. Well, their lap times show that they're still doing the fastest laps of their race. Mossy did set his fastest lap the last time around at a 147.9. He's staying there. Yeah. It's good. He's edged back. Just when I said he started to drop off the back a bit, he can look up and see these guys battling. He wants to make it a four-way battle here. Yeah, and that's all it needs sometimes. If you can see that those riders are just there in front of you, if you can feel yourself creeping forward towards them, that's enough drive, enough momentum, enough confidence to actually push you along just that little bit further. And I think that's also what we're seeing out of Metcalf at the moment. Sure, he might not have felt as comfortable in the qualifying sessions, but right now he's just riding on this drive to move forwards and you can see the end result right there in front of him. He's trying really hard to get up there. Coming out of that AMX Superstore's left-handed turn, all riders very, very close together and in formation as they now charge towards the finish line. Such a spectacular jump before tipping it into these very, very 
tight turns the left hander here in your turn Danny Ham the right hander the run what a uh, what a cracking track we are seeing here today at Maitland and what started off a little bit all over the shop we were wondering how much water is down is it a bit bouldery a lot of rocks and stuff it's really starting to take shape now yes it's got its hard packed slippery sections but that's what makes this track so demanding it's uh, something that well, I got a chance to speak to a couple of the riders earlier uh, just before this race and they said it's it's a bit of an awkward track at the moment. Yes, it looks like there's a lot of grip. Oh, mistake by Gibbs, the front wheel completely blown out through whatever bump that was. It wasn't just a mistake from Gibbs, it was some brilliance from Tanti who set that up and crossed across into some beautiful dirt. He is all over the back of the KTM rider at the moment. We watch him work his way around the outside. Oh, Gibbs covering the line there. Has to stay to the inside. They're, they are close enough this time in a split to maybe do different lines. Tanty, though, follows through. Yeah, wise move. You're just going to lose a lot of time by going to that inside there. Unfortunately, the track has evolved now into, a, into yeah, oh, like another inside. line. He has found some beautiful lines out there on the track. Yeah, that was a great one. Is yeah. he going to try for a different rut here? Because up until now, they've been taking that same middle rut, which has proven to be, I believe, a little bit smoother. Tanty still did that exceptionally well, but you can see it's got a couple of hooks, a couple of bumps in it. Yeah, that was one of the things I was saying. So it's a bit of an awkward track at the moment. It looks like there's a lot of grip in some spots, but then you hit that really hard base, and it's super, super slippery. And not only that, the ruts that we are seeing, they're full of holes and bumps. They're not a really nice, smooth rut that you can tip in, as we see Tanty again looking to run around on the outside remember this is the line that worked for him earlier on or at least for Gibbs oh. but they do come together and they squeeze back up and the, the one thing they did say is that you really have to be careful and take your time if you try to rush it the mistakes are going to come easy now we're seeing these riders jam up together this is also allowing Mossy to close in a little bit on these riders now Danny get inside of the helmet of Kirk Gibbs as we potentially see a pass about to be made here yes we do I was just going to ask you are we potentially seeing Gibbsy uh, tightening up a little bit here because he hasn't been able to drop these riders with his raw pace? They're all over the back of him, and if anything, they're lining up in formation. That's going to play on your mind. Now, this is a chance for Aaron Tandy to try to run off into the distance. Yeah, Tandy's in good position at the moment. We should take a look at the Honda replay. Just a good drive off that tabletop, straight down the inside. That was well set up nice and early. And you're right, the, uh, the opening laps of Gibbs, he looked much more comfortable than he did on that particular lap. Maybe it was just one or two little things that have... Uh uh, unsettled him just a fraction. Just quickly to mention about Dean Ferris, I know coming into this race, they were, they were really quite excited. Uh, Dean himself was saying that it's the best his body has felt all year. He's not carrying any injuries coming into this event. But also, just a bit of insight into his Honda HRC 450, they managed to get a hold of a couple of special HRC factory parts for the rear suspension. So the knuckle and linkage system on the rear end of that Honda 450 of full factory parts and supposedly got a little bit uh, of benefit out of that. So, ooh, a <laughs> little nudge there. Just a hello, I'm here. Uh, Kirk Gibbs, watch out. I'm, I'm trying to come through. That's not going to affect a ride of the calibre of Kirk Gibbs too much. It's a little bit more difficult than that. Was, oh, nice. He's trying to push it out what he has. Great little aggressive line up the inside and forces Gibbs off the side of the track. He has to start again from scratch from fourth place. Can he find his raw pace that he had in qualifying? So I wonder if it's uh, potentially, and, and we're only speculating here, maybe it's a, a tyre selection that's not so good for this hard stuff as we take a look at the replay. Watch Moss just dove it up the inside. Gibbs tried to keep that momentum going around the outside, but there was simply nowhere to go. So, yeah, great aggressive pass there. I don't think there was too much dirty about that at no, all. No, not needed, at all. Needed to make that pass happen. They closed in quite quickly on Gibbs. And uh, right now, Moss is looking good. He's looking fantastic. All right, well, we're halfway through this Moto One MX One. Thanks to Thor. Don't go anywhere. When we, when we come back, we've got plenty more action.
Welcome back to Maitland for Penrite Pro MX. We are here, Moto One of the MX One, and Aaron Tanti continues to lead, doing a fantastic job. That second place rider, Matt Moss, is on a charge. Well, we're going to keep an eye on the lap times over these next couple of laps to see exactly where Tanti is making up this time. Oh, oh, Gibbs. That was a super slow motion crash right in that mud there. The front wheel simply had nothing to hold on to. Oh, a bit of a shake of the head there. That was the, almost the exact same spot that Dylan Wills threw it yes. down with the front wheel tucking. We have a little bit of a look at the Honda replay here. Watch the front wheel. Comes through, slides, and uh, didn't necessarily push through quite like Dylan Wills did. Yep. That is just that much slop, slop in that area there that there's nothing to hold your wheels in place. Uh, again, a shame for him after such a, a strong start to the day with a qualifier and then leading this one but uh, he has dropped back a little bit now they will go back to the pits they'll regroup it's uh, write it off as a, a bad race and they'll come back out again I'm sure in the next one charging as we look at our lap times for our leaders and a 149.8 compared to a 150.7 for our first two places so Tanti has the number on Moss at the moment and is starting to stretch that lead back out 3.4 seconds now, with just one minute left on the clock before our race leader, Aaron Tanti, will receive that last lap to go board. Just quickly mention here with Brett Metcalf currently sitting in third place in this race and fourth place being Todd Waters, those two are only separated by two points in the championship points chase. So after Moto1, if positions remain the same, those two will be tied on points. However, Tanti will once again stretch that lead out. This is looking ominous for the rest of the field. Through the left of the splits, it is Tanti. That number nine machine working well underneath him. I know after the practice they said they had a, a few little things they had to sort out with the bike. Uh, and I, I saw them before the race and I said, yep, we've got that all dialed in. So great to see that they've fixed that up. There is the provisional points for the championship as they sit on track at this present point in time. And you're right, Brett Metcalf, Todd Waters will tie it up, but you said that Tanti is stretching it out. They can't let him do this. It's almost 20 points, 19 yeah. points. He's, he's not far off having a complete race ahead of his closest competitor, which will, which will be disastrous for the rest of the field. So lap 14 of 15 here, up and over the finish line tabletop. Matt Moss will receive one lap to go board. And uh, just trying to have a bit of a look there if that's a lapped rider or if that is Metcalf starting to edge a little bit closer to Matt Moss. Uh, I think that is a lapped rider, Lee. Yes. Um, yeah, that's just a lapped rider there. He's five seconds back. That next rider that just kind of saw the helmet. So what an impressive ride from Matt Moss here to be oh, able yeah. to hang on to within 3.6 seconds of Tanti, who clearly is in a league of his own here. And then quite a distance back to Metcalf, Waters, Gibbs, Melross, Ferris, some of the biggest names in our sport. Matt Moss has welcomed himself back to the party. Good to see another one entering into the challenge on each race weekend, but they have got a lot of work ahead of them if they want to be in front of this guy. Wearing the red plate number nine and for good reason too. Tanti is really coming to his own at the moment, stretching out that lead 4.6 seconds on the final lap. What a comfortable position for him to be in. Looking fantastic, Danny. And I had a, a good chat with the uh, head te technician for the CDA Yamaha Monster Energy team, Brad McAlpine, just to get a bit of an insight into what Tanti's been working on during this period away in between Gilman and this race here at Maitland. And he said the only main thing they've been working on is starts, starts after starts on the metal great they actually made their way here they got to do a little bit of testing here at the Maitland track and the main thing that they decided on was a different map to be able to uh, launch out of the gate so they're using launch control for the first time Tanti doesn't normally use it and it's worked well and here he comes to wrap up moto number one Thor MX1 what a victory for the CDA Yamaha Monster Energy rider. He has taken maximum points here. And have a look at the excitement from Matt Moss there. A well-earned second place. Todd Waters, he'll make his way through in fourth place with Brett Metcalf having already made his way over in third. Great to see uh, the excitement there for Matt Moss too. It's been quite a long time. 
and uh, I'm sure the confidence that gets built out of this is going to flow on for the rest of it. Let's take a look at the Thor MX1 Moto 1 results. Aaron Tenty, of course, Matt Moss, Brett Metcalf, Todd Waters, Hayden Melros back there in fifth place with Gibbs going back to sixth. Dean Ferris back a little bit further. Jaden Rikers just in front of Joel Whiteman. I saw them go across the line just there, and then it was Dylan Wood behind them. Plenty of riders doing sensational things here. We see Seager Ward back there in 18th place. A rider made, made his way over from South Australia. Great job to him. And in P1 from CDR Yamaha Monster Energy, Aaron Tanti. It wasn't quite the start you wanted, but you battled through and, and it was great to watch. Yeah, I got a little caught off guard with how long they held the gates. Um, bit of a double jump there and... You know, I was sitting behind it. I was probably in like sixth or seventh on the first lap and I just made some quick passes and, um, you know, got up the front pretty quick and I uh, uh, battled with Gibbsy at the start of the moto and finally made the pass for the lead and just pulled that little bit of a gap and, you know, just tried to manage the moto. Um, the track's really slippery out there, but, um, you know, my bike's handling awesome. Uh, the tyres are awesome with Dunlop tyres and uh, the whole team behind me and my whole program... Um, you know, I, I can't thank everyone enough that helps me out. Uh, it's It's been awesome this year. I'm not even sure you've broken a sweat. <laughs> I definitely feel it after that. It was a tough moto out there. Yeah, excellent. Congratulations. Thank you. Welcome back to the Penrod Oils Pro MX Championships brought to you by AMX Superstores and have a look at these five lads, the five boys to beat at the moment for old dogs against one of the younger lads, giving each other a little bit of a nudge, having a bit of fun here off the track, but when it gets time to get on the track, it's all business. <laughs> <laughs> it was great to see them boys having a bit of fun out there. It was funny watching Metcalf's face because he actually did a little trip unintentionally <laughs> right before that. And, uh, yeah, that was great to see. But uh, The funny thing is, they're all good friends. They, they yeah. get along great. Yeah, off track for sure. And it, it shows also on track the respect they have for each other. Yeah, for sure. They race hard against each other. And yes, they will push each other around where it needs to happen. But they've got a lot of respect. And that comes from the fact that they are kind of friends out off track and they do all get along. As we look at the Thor MX1 lineup for Moto number two, Kirk Gibbs was the fastest earlier on in the day. And he is there in the number one spot. Matt Moss, Aaron Tanti, Dean. Ferris, Hayden Muros, Todd Waters, Brett Metcalf, Dylan Wood, Privateer, number eight. That's great to see, as well as Joe Whiteman. Good to see a couple of these privateers up there pushing really hard. Yeah, such a strong lineup we see here in the Thor MX1 Moto 2 lineup. And we say these five boys, they even got their own little feature there, but it is uh, very important to remember that Matt Moss, if he continues his form that he had in the uh, first moto, that he is right up there and will maybe make that six riders and not just five. So, but he needs to consistently do what he did in that first one. Very impressive. Keep your eyes peeled on Matt Moss. All right, we are getting set for moto number two. Wow, was that super fast with a gate drop. Who was ready for that one? How, is the, how is the jump out of the gate? We've spoken was... about his ability to jump on that uh, that metal grade and how good he jumps out of the oh, oh wow. my lord that and was look close how wide that's pushed him he has been unable to stop simply because of that massive boot in the rear end now that's going to play on his mind Danny Ham because they have made a complete shock change right he will will have felt that and he'll be going what has just happened here the rider went down also just before that uh Ferris the went top. down so there's been all kinds of action happening as we look to the 100% whole shot award. It does, of course, go to Dean Ferris, but he was unable to hold it going in the second turn. Now, Danny, I'm hoping they're going to be able to give us a bit of a, a, a Honda replay of that start. And the second straight into that kicker that, D that Dean Ferris hit was incredibly big. Yeah, that was a big moment. And, yeah, you're right. It's just playing on his mind at the moment. As we see, the race lead... Battling it out right now. Moss on the outside. Metcalf into the lead right now. As they went across their last uh, split section for us, we had Moss in the lead. So well, I tell you, Aaron Tandy is on a charge, Danny Ham, because he just 
slipped past Dean Ferris so easily in that switchback corner. So we just got word also before this race started, we wondered why Gibbs may have uh, slowed down just a little bit. It is apparently a significant thumb injury and he was going out to see if he can even race this race. So we'll keep an eye on that, see where he is at the moment. It's unfortunate for him after such a strong start to the day. There he is up and over the finish line right now. He sits back there in seventh place. Oh, that is not what you want to hear, especially when he just found this recent form. He's been absolutely flying in the last couple of rounds. And of course, we saw his qualifying times earlier on. But how good is this? Brett McCarthy up at the head of the pack. Matt Moss back there in second place. Aaron Tanti looking menacingly fast here as he tries to make his way up into second place. And I believe he's made yes. the move on Matt Moss. Yeah, wasting no time at all, wanting to get to the front. He knows what Brett Metcalf can do when he gets into that groove. He is on fire at the moment. Tanti is starting to believe, isn't he? As we take a look at this start, watch to the inside of the brilliant launch out by the triple one machine. Oh, oh. First quick look over the shoulder, but watch him going into the second kick corner. Kick right That's there. He, oh, and, and the front wheel, I didn't catch that. That was just a comedy of errors that just happened one after the other, and he must have been checking himself. Yeah, I was looking for that other rider that went down, but here, straight up already, we have a challenge for the lead. That inside has been working well coming out of here, and it looks like it's going to work this time around as well. So, Aaron Tanti, the red plate holder, number nine, CDR Monster Yamaha is moved himself into the lead. He is unstoppable at the moment. The kind of form that he has found in the last two laps. And once again, not the greatest of starts, but he's just putting it together where need be. Matt Moss slots up into second place where he finished Moto 1. Can he get two from two? Certainly trying to push it uh, up the front. He sees the urgency of getting there in the second and trying to run down or at least run with TNT and keep that pressure on as they go up and over the finish line for the second time in this one. 21 minutes still left to go in this moto, and there's that hook I spoke yes. of. And I'll tell you what, it is a horrible hook as they come through there. Yeah, the difference in lines between Brett Metcalf taking that hook line and how much time he lost compared to Matt Moss, who only a few centimetres apart from each other, those two lines, totally different the amount of speed you can carry out of the exit. Dean Ferris now regrouped, trying to get back up there into the lead to regain such a, a brilliant start that he had to moto number two. And that is Metcalf, of course, on screen, the 24 machine. Grabbing a, uh, a quick pull of those roll-offs, getting himself some clean vision as he moves uh, into the sun, uh, going down to that straight. Now, I spoke to uh, Charlie Cannon, actually, earlier on today, and she said in practice how bad the sun was. And I feel in some of the parts where the riders are coming back towards the sun here that it's going to be low enough that it will be affecting their vision coming into those corners. Yeah, it's that time of the day where that sun does start to play a factor. And, of course, there's not a cloud in the sky out there at the moment. So the longer this race goes on, the further the sun comes down, you'll start to see the riders lowering their helmet, using the peak to give themselves a little bit of clear vision. It works exceptionally well. Matt Moss at the moment, he's trying to make a bit of a move here on Aaron Tanti. He's certainly keeping tabs with him, that's for sure. Oh, off the edge of the track, wow. so close right there, but uh, I was going to say, the last lap around, Aaron Tanti did a 147 to Matt Moss's 149, and he is on the back wheel of him, so I'm interested to see, although those couple of corners haven't been the best, uh, I'd be interested to see what kind of lap time Matt Moss actually is able to pull out this time around. Well, this is the when the track's at its worst at the moment. The last moto of the day, MX1 Moto2. And there we see Matt Moss off the side. He was very lucky to be able to get back on before those banners started. Otherwise, it might have been a little bit more difficult to get back on. That might be the way to go. 1.6 this time is the board to uh, Tanti over Moss. Yeah, and, and what we're seeing at the moment, perhaps, is that response that we've seen, and we saw it uh, in the final race at Gilman, where Aaron Tanti responded exceptionally well to pressure coming from behind. That time, it was from Brett Metcalf on home turf. This time, it's from Matt Moss, who finished second to him in the first moto. So he would know who's in second place. And he would also know that if he loses a spot here, he's going to lose the overall on the day. So he's copped a little bit of pressure. He's seen his pit board saying, plus one, time to go. Stop hanging around, let's go. And he has responded. And that's what I'm liking from the new version that we're seeing of Aaron Tanti. Ferris still back there in third place. Drop back to 
4.5 seconds at the moment, still matching the leader lap times on that last lap. So the speed is not an issue at the moment, but just maybe falling off the back of that toe that we speak about so often is all it takes to uh, not be able to close in the distance. A small mistake there as he goes through that left hander. So just as we were saying, a nice response from Aaron Tanti, and the gap now is out to 2.4 seconds between Tanti and Moss back there in second place. But as we mentioned before the drop of the gate for this final moto of the Thor MX-1 Moto 2, Danny Ham, we mentioned if Moss can do this again, he has come to play. Yes, this is his kind of surface. He loves this, but he knows how to ride sand. He can ride everything. If he's got his fitness right, but most importantly, if he is confident and he believes he should be racing up with these guys, he's extremely dangerous. On screen, of course, McCarthy, 24 machine. He has actually been passed by Mel Ross, according to our uh, timing, just up there in front of him. So this is a good ride by Mel Ross. Every single time he's on track, we are seeing more and more improvement out of him. So it's back to the form that we all know that Mel Ross should be able to do. You know, he has been such a fast rider in the past, and uh, there, there's nothing really that's uh, saying that he can't do that again. I believe that he could be up there challenging out for these overall positions. As we see, number nine still managing to hold that lead. Again, slightly faster lap time that time around for our leader and extends that lead out. He looks strong. He's just coming into his own in this mid part of the race. We've just reached 10 minutes to go. And I believe that in a mere two rounds, we've managed to see Aaron Tanti go from the last part of the race being his weakest link to nearly his strongest point. Let's quickly go down to Kate. Got Baden Blanchard here, Matt Moss's team boss. Baden, uh, how did he pull up after the last moto? Is he motivated enough to catch Aaron Tanti in this race? The important thing is now Matt believes he can catch her. So he, he's got that self-belief again and, and we think he can. He's on good equipment, on the best equipment we can give him. So I think Matt can get the job done. It's just how it unfolds. Thanks. Yeah, Matt Moss certainly looking the goods at the moment. A couple of lines Ooh. coming together there. I thought he was going to have to make a quick little exit stage left off the side of the track, but managed to keep it on OK. And nice line there, popping from the first part of the rut. And it's nice and tacky and able to ride out of the inside of that rut and find a nice smooth line and getting very creative here. Generally, it is the lead rider that is uh, most affected by the lapped riders. But unfortunately for that time, Moss seemed to be the one that helped the raw deal going through that turn. And you're right, I did expect to see him go off track as well. Very good to uh, manage to hold that on there and still uh, maintain that position. He was actually only 0.4 of a second slower than our leader, so he didn't really lose too much on that last lap. At Ferris, though, uh, matches the lead rider's time, but the quickest that last time around by a long way was actually Todd Waters in fourth. So almost 1.1 faster than our leader. He could be closing in onto Ferris. And as we uh, take another look at a replay right now, let's have a look at it. Oh, oh. no, Gibbs. Oh. That's a big hit. OK, where is that? so... I think that's where Burns was down after yes, the rolling woods. it was. So, look, for someone that was already carrying such a nasty thumb injury and wasn't even sure if he was going to be able to make it out onto the track, that is not what you want to see for Kirk Gibbs on a day that started so well for him. So strong. I, I honestly thought he was the man to beat today, but unfortunately for him, it's uh, just turned around. Here is Waters on the 47th machine. It's always lurking back there, isn't he? Slowly closing in. He's the rider that can uh, take advantage of any kind of mess up by these guys in front of him. Well, Todd Waters is obviously pressing at the moment, and it's that stage of the race now where we've still got seven minutes plus a lap before we even, you know, see that last lap board. So uh, there's still plenty of time for Todd Waters to try to ease up onto the back of his nemesis, someone that over the years has been so, so close to him as far as battles and championships go. And off we, off we see Kirk Gibbs here, and this is just uh, not the way you want to end your day. Uh, very deflated and uh, uh, unfortunate for him after such a strong start. All right, back to second place. That is Moss. Here is third place in the triple one of Dean Ferris on the Honda. A red bike blasting across that start line and into the mechanics area. He does have a couple of lap riders to get through just here. Uh, I know that he'll be uh, trying his best to try and get through them clean because he knows that Todd Waters, the 47, that just came over the jump behind him, is not all that far back, and he could pose a challenge here quite soon. 
and down the bottom of the screen, of course, and we can see the, the dirt on the right-hand side of Kirk Gibbs on his shoulder and right down that arm and leg. He's gone down exceptionally hard on the right-hand side. I hope his shoulder is OK uh, and hopefully hasn't re-injured that thumb even more than what he did in Moto1. Oh, Waters just got held up so much as well right there. So it was a bit of a uh, an even play there for both of these riders getting through these lap, uh, lap couple of riders as well. As they move into this left hand of that off camber and Waters is now cleared and you can see, watch his eyes, they're up. Every time he goes over a jump, they're always up looking at where that next rider is, Dean Ferris. He's looking exceptionally comfortable, but I must say, even for Dean Ferris, other than that moment that we saw into turn number two straight out of the start, where he almost got ejected over the handlebars, his bike has looked so much better in this race. The Honda looking a lot more settled. Five minutes left in this one before we see the last lap board on screen, the 47. Husqvarna rider, Todd Waters, 47. Oh, little break in, though, going into that corner, bounce off one of those braking bumps move towards the finish line and he is visibly closer uh, still not really in a striking distance but any of these lapped riders could play into it especially in this particular part of the track where everything tightens up so much a beautiful line there from Todd Waters on the factory Husqvarna machine carrying number 47 on the bike he came into this moto number two tied on points with Brett Metcalf for second place overall Medi has managed to make his way through the back of the field towards sixth place now. So all alone, I dare say, will be Todd Waters by himself in second place now in the championship points hunt. However, Aaron Tanti on the CDR Yamaha Monster Energy machine will well and truly cement that red plate on his bike. As it stands at the moment, Tanti will move himself up to 214 points in this championship. And then the closest behind him, I feel, will be Waters on 188. So it's a massive points lead that he has right there. That's over one race. A uh, great way to start the second half of the season. Having himself such a handy lead going into it as he gets held up just a Ooh, little bit. And that's dropped him back a little bit into the clutches of Matt Moss, who he'd had that gap out to 2.8 seconds. And now Matt Moss finds himself almost back onto the rear end of Tanti. So a little bit of assistance from the lap riders, but hey, lap riders are a part of anyone's quest to win a race, aren't they? You've got to deal with them sooner or later. And yes, it is the leader who always seems to come off second best when it comes to the lap riders, but everyone has to deal with them. So let's see how this translates into the next few laps. Three minutes plus a lap still to go on the Thor MX1 Moto2 time clock. Up and over the finish, there are our two lead riders. Oh, you see how tight uh, it was for Tanti that time around. He was actually staying up and out of the rut on the inside of all places, trying to keep clear of that hook and just putt his way through that corner nice and slow. Moss, quick glance over to his pit board to see exactly how long they have left. He looks charged and invigorated yes. and ready to go. Now, I think we have an Aaron Tanti that's ready to fend off any challenges, but how hard is the challenge going to come from Matt Moss? Yep, absolutely. So go over the Dunlop tabletop just here and into this corner. Easy lift turn for Tanti. Moss around the outside. That's a long way around there. I think he might have lost a little bit of ground. He takes a glance over at the lapsed rider, making sure that he can clear that and get himself into here. Really turn to the right. Moss still charging very hard at the moment. His bike looks to be working quite well. You know, he's got some good lines out there that's keeping him out of the majority of the bumps, but I'm going to dare say he doesn't quite have some of the factory components that, you know, his uh, fellow blue rider oh. has got up at the head of the pack. That was nearly throwing it down. Without a doubt, would have lost himself about a half a second or so there, I would say. Well, shame for Moss because just the turn before, Tanti actually tucked the front in the left. So it was looking like Moss might have had an advantage there for a second, but unfortunately for him, just uh, a little bit loose coming out of there. And I'd say that uh, with two minutes to go, that could be all that Tanti needed to control this race to the chicken flag. Yeah, and we can see just two corners after he made that mistake and nearly went down. He was sneaking a look over his left-hand shoulder to see, is there anyone coming? What's my gap back to third place? Well, you've got four seconds back to Dean Ferris on the Hyundai HRC machine. 
And Dean Ferris has still got himself just a little bit of a gap back there to Todd Waters. Well, that cut down to 2.9, actually, as they crossed the line that time. So still a nice little lead, but certainly uh, it's, you can't back off at this moment, Moss. You've still got to push this one to the end. As we see over the finish line there is uh, Melros and Metcalf with Metcalf making the pass. Ooh. Nice little gritty pass near the yes. end of the race. The kind of riding that we expect from Brett Metcalf. Unfortunately, he's going to lose a few points to his nemesis, Todd Waters, who's up there in fourth place at the moment. Oh, slipping sideways there. You've got to wonder, is that the, uh, is that the key? Is that the catalyst that has uh, slowed him down just a little bit in this race? The amount that that back end is stepping out in these harder conditions as they go into this part particularly very hard and I was showing that on the, the little track preview the amount of rubber that is on the ground just coming off that finish line I'm sure there's plenty of places around this track you can see it right there on that particular takeoff how much rubber is being laid down it's so hard and you really do need to be a hard pack specialist to be able to negotiate your way around this track successfully lap after lap after lap without making too many mistakes 25 minutes plus a lap is an eternity around the track like this and if you're one of the front runners then you throw lapped riders into the mix wow what a what a nightmare well our leader is about to come over the finish line 10 seconds to go he may beat the line just here Oh, unfortunate. 237. That's Josh Whitehead. As our leader comes over and we'll get the last lap board this time. Time expired. So it's gone from over three seconds back down to 2.5 second gap to Matt Moss. Does he have enough time? Oh, big step out sideways for one of our lapped riders there. But hoping to have a little bit of a look at our race leader, Aaron Tanti, and the gap back to Matt Moss, who seems to be trying to make one last lap surge. There's Tanti there. There's Matt Moss. He's got one last shot at it to try to do something. This City Yamaha rider has not put a foot wrong throughout this whole moto. No, and that line there just shows how confident he is at the moment, really picking up something that almost was not there. He's made it work and, and worked beautifully as well. And I think that's the key at, at the moment is just getting around nice and smooth like that. He can continue those lines. Moss, so look at the charge that he's trying to put on. It is super late to be putting this kind of a, uh, a move on. But, hey, if you can grab it on the last corner, imagine what he can say. He will come away with wins. Stranger things have happened. And if yep. you're going to make a mistake, how easy is it to make one on the final lap? We'd like to think these seasoned veterans, are they're not possibly going to make a mistake on the last lap. Surely they're going to sew it up. Well, Matt Moss has put himself into a position where if Aaron Tandy makes a mistake, he is ready to pounce. Ooh. Coming across three lapped riders abreast here, Anything can happen. We're only three corners away from the finish. Yeah, that white line just there it seems to lose Matt just a little bit each time he goes through there as Tent he negotiates his way through these last couple oh. of years stuck in behind them. If these guys push wide, he may get held up, but I don't think it's enough for Moss to catch in there. And our leader will come around for the final time. Complete a great day. And it will be Tanti that comes across with the win in moto number two. Well, what a way to dominate a day. The only thing missing was qualifying. And of course, Kirk Gibbs, who was our number one qualifier. Unfortunately, we saw what happened to him with absolute devastation. But Aaron Tanti, what a way to secure this championship points lead and extend over your main place getters awesome stuff and it's a, a solid day of racing here at maitland and a much improved dean ferris back there in third place danny ham let's take a look at the thor results mx1 moto 2 aaron tanty stamps his authority with a double victory here matt moss in second place likewise dean ferris back there in third todd waters in fourth place and brett metcalf rounding out the top five Good ride, more improvement for Hayden Melross as well back there in six. Whiteman, another solid ride. Wood up there in eight. Watts and Evans, some more privateers up there battling it out and getting some great results as well. And it did notice, unfortunately for uh, Jaden Rikers, look like he retired out of this one as well. Aaron Tanti from CDR Yamaha Monster Energy. What an incredible weekend, an incredible performance. Uh, your first double victory, what a statement. 
Yeah, no, that was uh, that was awesome. Uh, you know, coming off the win last round was my first uh, win in MX1, and I grabbed the points lead. And now to back it up and go 1-1 for the day, um, you know, I'm, it's unbelievable. And you know, I just can't thank the whole team around me that, like the CDR Yamaha Monster Energy team, um, my whole crew that, uh, back home, my coach and my trainer. Um, you know, it's a, it's a big effort, and uh, it's it's all come together, and I'm I'm really happy with how everything's going and yeah looking forward to taking to the end I've gained a lot of points this round so uh, we're going to keep moving forward and do that in the next few as well and I'll tell you what's really special is that you get to be here with so many friends and family yeah it's awesome um, this is probably the closest round to my original home when I lived back in Sydney so a lot of my friends and family up here my dad and you know my partners here as well and brothers and yeah everyone so it was awesome hearing them on the side cheering me on and yeah, to do this in front of them, it's it's unbelievable too. Well done. We'll see you in Coffs Harbour. Thank you. All right, take a look at the Thor Championship points. MX1 after five rounds. We have Aaron Tanti, 214 points. What a lead he's got over Todd Waters, 188. From Brett Metcalf, 186. And Dean Ferris back with 175. Still pretty close up front there for the minor places, so this is certainly not decided just yet. Unfortunate for Gibbs to drop back so many points on that one, but I'm sure that he will rebound, no doubt, coming into these next couple of rounds. He was uh, super fast today. The mindset on him was incredible, so expect to see him again. What a day's racing we have just witnessed here at Maitland for round Thanks, six of the Penrod Oils Pro MX Championships presented by AMX Superstore. On behalf of myself, Lee Hogan, Danny Ham, and Kate Pell, Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next at round seven of the championship as we head further north to Coffs Harbour in New South Wales. Goodbye for now.